Our heroes confront the Queen of Chaos at last. Let's hope they can kick some wolf spider ass. This month on D D minus. Everybody, roll that initiative for me. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. 11, mm -hmm. 9, 17. Theoretically, since this is the end of the season, we could just like die, right? You sure can. This is the, this is the one time we do not have... <laughs> this would be the, the shortest episode. Well, we, we could die late, right? Like this, But this is the one time we don't have plot armor. I would like to hold on to Bridget Boulderstash as long as I fucking can. So guys, get it together. Okay. Yeah, Anna's really advocating for bonus episodes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, so that is it. Miska is up first. And he is going to cast Web. And so he points his four hands at the ground in front of him and a tremendous, sticky, demonic web spreads out from either side and all around him, covering the entire beach. Every inch of sand all the way out to the ocean is now covered in this sticky black webbing. Ew. I'm going to roll for cum joke. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything you don't need to roll for on this show, it's a cum joke. <laughs> you would think on a beach, a webbing would be sort of like not very effective because the sand would just eventually cover the webbing, right? Oh God, that would be so funny if he does this like ominous beginning of the battle thing, but it just rolls up like a cat turd. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I've never <laughs> done this on beach before. This like is as the sand shifts, wouldn't it just cover the webbing? This is embarrassing. Do you guys mind if we move to uh, Greece <laughs> so I can do this on, on sort of flat surface? This is, uh, oh boy, is my face red. And also two wolves. <laughs> So, no, the webbing works fine. So all the area around him and in front of you is this sticky black webbing. Also, for your information, it is difficult terrain, which means your movement speed is halved. Mm. And that's all he's going to do for his first turn. Bridget, you are up. I would like to dispel that magic. Ooh. Choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on target ends. So I guess it would be the, the beach so we can move freely again. Yeah, so he throws out this black curling web all around the land and the lightning comes smashing down and just catches fire and it all like quickly, bur like flash paper just sort of burns into place and you're all standing on the beach again. And he just looks sort of mildly disappointed like he was he was <laughs> excited to fight on a web because he's a spider all right but like for like the graphic novel version we should say that it made like glass like a web of glass mm. from, from the, you know like they can get crunched underfoot and shit doesn't have to yeah right it would just look cool now i want to make the entire fighting field glass so it's just like a slip slidey like whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> the entire oh my god it's in my fingernails <laughs> Ooh, glass Ugh. Ugh. don't fall on it <laughs> <laughs> All right. Movements, bonus actions, anything. I'd like to... You know what? I'm going to stay back for this one. Perfect. Do you mean you're going to stay where you are? I'll move in front of Snedrick or something because I know he doesn't have as many hit points as I do. Okay, perfect. He can still see past me if he wants to. Great. So Bridget takes her position in front of Snedrick, protecting his frail gnomish frame. And <sighs> Dave, you are up. I'd like to summon Carl the Pug Pegcorn. Oh, Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> the chain on your wrist glows gold and Carl the Pug of Pegacorn steps through a demonic portal, cracking his knuckles. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Carl, what's up? You excited? I'm so excited. We're going to fuck this guy up. We're going to fuck up this guy. Yes, absolutely. I've seen him before. He like hangs around <laughs> hell. Oh shit. Have you dealt with him? Yeah. Can I tell you? He's one of those guys who's like, I'm just a demon. 
So you're like, how's it going, man? And he's like, and you're like, all right, we get it. No one's here. But he won't just talk normal. Never drops the bit. Never drops the bit. God, that's the worst. People just never stop joking and everything's a joke. Oh my God, it's exhausting. Imagine running a business with somebody like that. It's impossible. (laughs) Impossible. God. Dave, you get hit by lightning and fucking die. You die. You die of actually cancer of the ass of the eyeballs. Your ass falls into your eyeballs and you die. As I'm dying, I'm like, Carl, you know what to do. Uh, (laughs) Cool. So Carl will act after your initiative. So you get a whole turn. You can move and any of your bonus actions now. All right. Uh, I think I'm I'm regular guy now. I don't like have any bonus actions anymore. My like old, my grandfather and my like futury one had stuff. You want to make some fucking stones? No, he doesn't even have magic stones anymore. What? I think I got rid of that spell because you guys never played with my stones. Oh. <laughs> He's got to make them all the time. Because we made an entire podcast. I used your stones. <laughs> it's true. Snedrick did use your stone. He used your stone. Did it get used once? Okay. Yeah. Did it get used once? All right. Well, I don't think I have. <laughs> so I, have I am just going to uh, back away from all the, the webby stuff as much as I can. Okay. The web is gone. Oh, you dispelled it with the dispel magic. Yeah, baby. All right. I'm still going to back up as much as I can. <laughs> so you would be 50 feet away if you take your full speed, just so you know. Let's make me 30 feet away. 30 feet away. So you just go 10 feet back. I'm going back 10. So Dave, Dave does like a fucking the bar mitzvah slide. dance <laughs> shuffle backwards. I think I electric slide and then I end with a moonwalk just a little bit though. Yeah, absolutely. Moonwalk. Dexterity saving throw for a moonwalk, please. Okay. <laughs> oh. It's a save. Yep. What's going to happen? He moonwalks Is there a risk badly? of this going really badly? <laughs> there's a risk of this going incredibly badly. I mean, you know there's a risk of this going very That's badly. I, I medium moonwalk. Oh, no. You yeah. neither yeah. moonwalk nor don't moonwalk. <laughs> you just walk. Schrodinger's You walk moonwalk. backwards successfully. You're pretty sure. I bet you're sure you're moonwalking. All right, so my vision is that he's in the sand, so he's not actually going anywhere. He's just digging sand in behind <laughs> him. He, per- but- he so perfectly moonwalks that he just digs himself down like a foot yeah, and a half. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Excellent. I love that. Love it. All right. I get a uh, pocket full of sand ready for pocket sand also as my bonus action. Ooh, all right. Pocket sand, official cannon. Got it. <laughs> Claw, you are up. Okay, I am going to check. Do you know my jump distance offhand? Well, you can fly now. Oh. Yes. Do you know my flight distance offhand? I do. I think it's just your speed, right? No, it's... Oh, no, that's walking speed. It's like faster than that, I believe. Yeah. Unencumbered. Yeah, I was looking for it. I can't find it. Flying speed is 50 feet. Okay, so I don't have to step of the wind then. So I'm going to fly like a bullet, like straight at him. Ooh. And I'm going to do, okay, it's been a while since I've done this. So it says two attacks per action. Mm -hmm. And then on these flurry of blows, it says after you take the attack action, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes. Does that mean that I would do attack, two unarmed strikes, attack, two unarmed strikes? No, because flurry of blows is a bonus action. So you only get one bonus action in a round of combat. So you would get two attacks and one flurry of blows costing you one key point. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do two unarmed strikes and then a flurry of blows to do two more unarmed strikes. Ooh, I love it. Oh, Roll yeah. those attacks for me. Ooh, 11. Nope. Uh, 24. That hits. Okay. Yeah. And then 21. That does not hit. Okay, so 12. So one hit. So he's 20, I'd say he's probably 23. Fantastic. Roll that damage. It's not going to be a lot. Oh. Five. Five damage. You just slapped him across the face. Not a lot. Why can't we be level 20? <laughs> yeah, so you, Claw comes flying through the air, strikes him in his armored front, uppercuts him in the throat. That's where the damage comes from. And then two more strikes <laughs> to this armored body. And he, Miska does not look phased. <laughs> I mean, it's better than throwing out a bunch of fucking web and then having it blown away by a goddamn <laughs> yeah, lady immediately <laughs> afterwards. So. Yeah, fuck him. Thank you. No bonus actions. All right, Snedrick, you are up. So I'm going to cast this enlarge reduce spell. I'm going to reduce him. Ooh. You cause a creature or object you can see within range to grow larger or smaller for the duration. Choose a creature or object that is neither worn nor carried. If the target is unwilling, it can make a constitution saving throw, but I'm going to use my portent there, so it's going to get a two. 
<laughs> yeah. So the target size is halved in all dimensions and its weight is reduced to one eighth of normal. This reduction decreases its size by one category from medium to small, for example, until the spell ends, which is one minute. The target also has disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. The target's weapons also shrink to match its new size. <laughs> oh. While these weapons are reduced, the target's attacks with them deal 1d4 less damage. Which is, you know, practically nothing. But but it's cute, right? It'll be cute. I want it as a pet. <laughs> yeah, so he's now small. So this towering demonic fear is now the size of, like, a short guy. <laughs> Just about the size of Snedring. Like a baby deer. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> baby deer is perfect. All right, movements, bonus actions, anything? I have no bonus actions, and I kind of like this spot behind... Uh, Behind Bridget, so I will stay as I am. Cuddle in to get through Bridget's back. <laughs> well, there's a lot of beer farts back here, so I'm not going to cuddle in too much. But. Right, exactly. I was going to say we short people stick together, but bam, and not now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Carl's turn. He turns to you, Dave. The old horn in the eyeball? Yeah, I love the old horn in the eyeball. You want to do one of the wolves or you want to do the guy? I'm not going to lie. I forgot that wolves existed. I feel like if we get the dog, the dog's just going to be like, or, 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 and we're going to be like, well, that fucking sucks, right? Because that's just the dog. <laughs> that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Let's get the guy. Yeah. As far as I can tell, the dogs have one arm each just to make it like easier for this to make sense physically, right? I don't think the dogs are in control of any of the arms. I've never talked to them about it. Yeah, I don't think they're doing it. I think I think they're just there. They they're not really doing anything. They're not really doing anything. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. And he just goes sailing past, like with a, a large margin past him. He's like, oh, fuck, I missed him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of Carl's turn. Did you roll? I felt like you would roll for that. Oh, he rolled. <laughs> he rolled a six. Carl. <laughs> yeah. You hate to see it. <laughs> He's the other sixty feet of beach away. Is Carl in the water now? Carl's floating above the water behind him. <laughs> you know what happened? He sailed past him and into like an, one of those extra large waves. <laughs> so now and he's fighting his, <laughs> fighting his way to the surface. Okay. All right. Miska is up. He's going to look down at you, Claw. You mean look up. He is tiny. That's true. He is tiny. He's going to look m across at you. He's going to look at you in whatever How tall am I? <laughs> thing we've said. In fact, he's going to look all of you and he's going to let out an infernal roar or because of his size, he's going to let out a infernal growl. <laughs> <laughs> squeak. He has a squeak. It's not that small. He's not like pocket size, but it's, it's, no, it's, it's not quite baby. a chihuahua, but it's like it's not much more than a pug. You know? Exactly. How tall was he beforehand? He was like a giant demon. So I now he's just like a short guy. So he's like 5'2". He was one giant demon unit, and now he's shorter than that? Is that <laughs> yeah. Is that what we should use? Yeah. As our information? He's still probably po taller than me and Snedrick. Yeah. He went from Heath to Morgan. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't make Miska the wolf spider take the presidential challenge before this fight. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I don't know his forward bend. <laughs> I'd like to roll to make him do a pull-up. <laughs> He's got four <laughs> arms. It's going to go great. Anyways, he lets out this roar and he casts terror. So Bridget, Claw, Snedrick, but not Dave, you are all going to make a DC 23 wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. I have a plus zero, so I just won't roll. I have a plus one. So yeah, there's... Well, fuck me. I got a 12. Now I'm fucking <laughs> terrified. Let's just do it for fun. I was going to say six. Same here. All right. So the three of you start screaming uncontrollably now. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You were all terrified of this baby deer sized <laughs> demon. It's still bigger than me and f the fucking gnome. <laughs> oh, I'm the fucking gnome the now. The fucking right. gnome. Jesus Christ. <laughs> a quick reminder, a frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, while the source of its fear is within sight. The creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. And the start of your next turn, that will automatically stop. So not this turn that you're about to have, but the next turn, it'll automatically stop. And he's also going to take a couple of swings at Momo here. Bring it. That'll be a 34. 
I mean, barely, but sure. If you want, he gets you. Just gets you. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be twenty-two damage, Momo. I am so confused as to why we're still level seven, but whatever. <laughs> the wand of seven, eight parts. It's the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We should have gained the experience from all the time traveling to our current From all characters. the friends you made and all the things you learned. <laughs> <laughs> is an experience the friends we made along the way? If it's the friends we made along the way, I don't think we've had much experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky fingers, claw. All of a sudden, yeah. we're, le- we're negative three level. <laughs> <laughs> Just hitting ourselves in the face with spells. <laughs> and then he is going to move around claw. So claw, he like swipes you out of the way with one of his scimitars, gives you a good slash with one of his scimitars, and then charges towards Bridget. Wouldn't that be like a disengagement? Oh, yes. So you two get an attack of opportunity on him if you'd like. Okay. I will do... Why would he not like? (laughs) I'll do a quarterstaff strike. Do we yet? Fuck. 18. That will not hit. Yeah. So you, you tap him on his armored back as he goes by, but he just sort of slashes you aside and heads towards Bridget and Snedrick. Bridget, he is now standing right next to you and Snedrick with all four swords raised. That scream's been happening this whole time, by the, the way. Whole yeah. Time. Yeah, yeah, we'll this add, entire time. We'll add it in post so that no one ever listens to this podcast again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, keep doing it. People love it. Yeah. No, no, no. I love screams. it. I love it. Yeah. yeah screaming love in your ears. Yes. Stuff. Yep. I will. I had an idea. Fuck, where is it? I am going to summon my motorcycle gang of lesbian spirit guardians. Ooh, fantastic. You have that? Yes. How come this has never happened before? Has has this been a thing? Uh, oh, it's happened before. You just don't listen to the fucking podcast. So remember the dick fight? Where all those little fairies on bikes. <laughs> I do though. So I'm gonna cast that, which isn't about him. It's about me. So I shouldn't have any disadvantage doing that. Concentration for up to ten minutes. You call for spirits to protect you. They flit around you. These ones are little tiny lesbian biker fairies. They flit around you to a distance of fifteen feet for the duration. If you are good or neutral, the spirits appear to be angelic or fae. They're little fairies. When you cast a spell, you can designate any number of creatures you can see to be unaffected by it. Obviously, my, my party. An affected creature's speed is halved in the area. And when the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save. The creature takes the damage anyway. So that's it. They're here now. Great. All right. Bonus actions, movements, anything. You can't move towards him, but you don't need to because he's standing right there. Yeah, no, I can't do my bonus action because I didn't summon my weapon. All right, Dave, you are up. All right. It feels like an Eldritch Blast is a reasonable thing to do right now. Absolutely. (laughs) Very reasonable. Eldritch Blast is always a reasonable thing. Weirdly reasonable. I wonder what's wrong with you, honestly. Don't worry. I'm doing a thing. Be cool. So what do I do? I just roll. (laughs) <laughs> you roll the dice. Okay. All right. That's a 22 to hit. 22. That will hit. Boom. Nice. Fantastic. Roll that damage. All right. That doesn't feel like a lot. Seven damage. Yeah. So he raises these four swords. Bridget summons this field of fairies. And then this fucking blast of eldritch light goes sailing in between the fairies in slow motion. We see two motorcycle fairies both jump their motorcycle and duck onto their motorcycle (laughs) as Dave's spell comes right in between them and smacks Miska the wolf spider right in the side of the head and he (laughs) shakes it off turns with an angry growl all right so yeah Dave bonus actions anything I'd like to no I don't have any bonus I'm gonna move I'm 30 feet away from you are 30 feet away from well now you are 10 feet away from him. Oh, he moved towards us. Yes. Okay, I'm going to move back 20 feet. <laughs> All right. 30, 20 feet. I like this 30 foot range. It worked on. Dave just gently steps up onto the lighthouse of time. Starts yeah. to creep back. <laughs> I'm going to get my grandfather who could kick some ass right now. Yeah, that's what we should be doing. He's smiling and nodding and backing out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like this is going really badly, guys. I am going to go. <laughs> All right. Claw, you are up. Keep in mind, you are frightened, so you cannot move towards him. And I am like 
50 feet away. <laughs> uh, you're not 50 feet away. You are 20 feet away. Oh, okay. So I cannot move. Uh, you can't move towards him. So I can move in any other direction except towards him. Correct. So I'm going to step a foot away from him. Okay. That's the entire turn. All right. What? All right. What, what? what did I do? What's happening? Claw just screams and then takes a gentle step. You don't have any range attacks? Not that far, I don't think. 20 feet? No, I got a quarter staff. I got talons. Don't you have like ninja stars or something? Everything's yeah. in close. Like you spit darts. at him or something. Yeah, I have, you have darts. Darts. You have darts. Yeah. yeah. Get your fucking darts. Do you have, wait, do you have like neck darts? No, just like darts from the I mean, bar. any dart can be a neck dart if you put it into somebody's neck, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Two darts. That's a critical with the first dart. Holy shit. Oh, that'll hit. 27. Oh, shit. Right in the neck. Oh, it was almost another critical, but 21. So yes and no. Oh, two solid dart throws. Here's what I'll say. He lifted all four arms to hit Bridget and Snedrick. But because of this dart hitting him in exactly the acupuncture point for weakening... There's no <laughs> such thing. Miska the wolf spider's lower two points. arms. It's true. Acupuncture doesn't work on anyone except Miska the wolf oh, spider. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. I see. All right. He Fantasy doesn't have veins and muscles right. and stuff. Yeah, he actually has just chi points. It's weird. <laughs> I'm thinking like I hit him in the coccyx, right? Like, dunk, right Oh, yeah, there. right in the coccyx. Yeah, yeah, so those two bottom arms that were going to do the extra attacks, those go limp. And so now he's only going to do a single attack on his turn and roll that damage with the double dice. Five points of damage. <laughs> Five damage. All right. Slowly but surely. We've done under 20 damage to him in like two rounds of two turns. <laughs> Wait until my fairies get a chance. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> I have a water skin. We could do some homeopathy on him, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Why didn't I? I'll create that villain for the next arc. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Writing it in my notes. Season two. All right. Bonus actions. Anything? Don't believe so. All right. Snedrick, you are up. All right. So it's, I'm kind of pissed because like I've never managed to actually find a use for the bun bun of soothing. And I could have used it to like unterrify everybody, but everyone's already unterrified. Just the order didn't make it make any sense. I'm not <laughs> unterrified. Are you not unterrified? Uh, you will be That's at the right. start of your yeah, next you, turn. Yeah, you will be by the next turn. So I'm going to summon my ass wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yes. All yeah. right. Roll that D4 for me. So we're going to summon three ass wolves. Three ass wolves are summoned. So these three wolves jump out of the tramp stamp on your lower back. Miska, the wolf spider, and his two wolves look very surprised by this. It was. It's on my ass. It's, they fly out of my <laughs> yeah. ass. Let's, let's yeah. you know. Let's keep the visual correct here. This is why, by the way, Heath, that I didn't do pocket sand because I knew I was going to tear my pants away at some point during the, <laughs> the wall of spider and I just wouldn't be able to get to it in time. But I have it in the breast pocket so I can take my pants off. Oh, nice. Yeah, to. okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> just in case. I just want to make that sure that's established that I might take pants off and still be able to do pocket sand. I feel like that was getting closed off for a second. Exactly. But it's not. All right. I take my pants off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. I don't know why. I don't know why. You're, but it's you're hot. doing that We're thing. You didn't take your shoes off, so you're just like kicking. You're doing yeah. that weird I'm, kicky yeah, thing where you're trying to get out of your pants, <laughs> trying to step out of them. Should I just finish masturbating or deal you're with this? You're also kind of fleeing. So yeah, no, it's, a, <laughs> it's the final battle. I'm sure everyone listening to our show. I step into the time travel thing. This went very badly. Everything's going <laughs> yeah. bad for me. I'm sure I'm going to go back to the beginning of the episode. And thanks. Start yes, yeah, yeah, thanks for listening to the podcast. <laughs> And Snedrick, those three wolves are actually going to act all together right after you. So I assume you want them to attack Miska the wolf spider? Yeah, I mean, there's there's three of them and he's got three heads, right? So I feel like each of them can go for a throat. All right. We got a 13. Nope. We got a six. Nope. We got a another six. Nope. All right. So those wolves go, yeah, yeah, woof. Ruff, ruff. You know what? They've been in your ass for a while. Like it's been three arcs. Okay. They have been, to say the least, cooped up. Yeah. So they, they sort of swing and miss with their next one. They're all just like playing with Carl in the water now. They're just like splashing. Yeah, right, right. Yes, exactly. Now the dogs are all play chasing a ball in the water that they found in there. Okay. Speaking of which, Carl does bubble to the surf. It is his turn. And he looks to you, Dave, and he's like, why are you taking your pants off, man? What are you doing? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I got I got excited about a thing. I forget what it what was. Did you get, it was hey, what did you get excited about? <laughs> I got, it doesn't, it's not, there's a spider thing, whatever, you. I mean, it was right after he saw my ass. I'm just saying, he's back there, I'm up here. Yeah, okay, my pants well, came up and, and. Not the time. That. I mean. Not the time, Tate. Bro, you're not, not wearing time. pants, so. Yeah. Whatever. Because I'm a pug. You could have. And when I wear pants, can I say, it's adorable. <laughs> I, I would actually, now that I think about it, I can imagine. Well, you know, maybe we defeat the queen of chaos and save the world. And I'll no, wear yeah, pants no, we'll, we'll, focus yeah. in, we'll focus in. The, the spider guy doesn't wear pants either on the eight legs, just like a, like a robe thing, which is weird. If a spider wolf did wear pants, would he wear the four on the bottom legs or would he wear them on the bottom side? Oh, do you think four of them are arms and four are legs? Is that what you mean? Like, he wouldn't have pant legs for the front, too, right? That's what I was thinking, right? Is, yeah, yeah. You, you think six pant legs? Yeah, yeah. Total? Honestly, a bathing suit with, like, 20 holes in it. Miska, mm. we're, 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 settle a bet for us. How many legs are you wearing on the spider situation if you have pants going? <laughs> See, that's the, that's the problem right there. <laughs> Won't yeah. cut the fucking act and answer a goddamn question. You see what I'm saying, right? He yeah, never no, stops. I get it's it. like we're I having a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. We're That's trying to the do worst. A thing. Can you stab him in the face, please? One stab in the face. Come right up. And that's a one. <laughs> no, it's a seven. Never mind. I thought it was a one. But he does go sailing past him once again. You motherfucker. He's hard to hit. You made him smaller. Snedrick. Snedrick. I, I never like to do this. But it was kind of your fault because you did make him smaller. I felt like I would have had a better chance to hit him when he wasn't so small. No, I'll own that. I'll own that. Can I do deflect missile on Carl? No. Come the on. Only things that are thrown at you. Come on. He's not even going by you. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm like, it does a the physics feet away. don't. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> physics don't make sense. All right. So Carl, big swing and a miss. Now he's back like next to me. Yeah, he's next to you. <laughs> All right. He's a nice stick. Carl, will you grab that ant pant leg, just the ankle? I want to get one of them off. Okay, I'm pulling you up. I'm pulling yeah, you. Grab hold it still, grab it. and I'll no, come. I'll move. I'll behind move. you. You no, jump into him. Oh jump my into God. Him. Stop it. You're ripping it. You're ripping it. Hey, everybody. Just hopping in once again for the last time this season to say thank you so much for listening to the show. This is our season finale. It is the last episode of season one. It has been a blast to play with these characters and play this plot, but we are moving on next episode to season two. But before you get too sad, I have some fantastic news for you. I've hinted around about this. We've chatted about this maybe in person to some people, but we are moving to two episodes a month next month. That's right. So this month, you're getting the finale, but next month in October, you will get two episodes, one the usual bat time and channel, and then one two weeks later. And that first episode in October is going to be a D&D Minus Zone, where we will do a full cast Q&A about this season, about what you enjoyed and didn't enjoy, uh, questions about what it's been like to play in the campaign, all that. And if you want to ask a question for that full cast Q&A, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. The day this episode comes out, the AMA thread will be posted there and you can ask whatever your heart has been desiring to ask the full cast. That'll be the first episode in October. And then we're going to jump right into season two just a couple of weeks later. And then we are going to aim for the first and third Fridays or Thursdays, if you're a patron of every month moving forward. So if you're a patron and you give us money per episode and you can't afford to give us two episodes worth of money, make sure you adjust your pledge. Or hey, what, how about don't do that and let us have double the money is actually significantly important to us being able to do it. But if if that's something you need to do, please don't forget to do it starting in October. All right, let's get back to the finale. Thanks so much for listening to the show. It's been an absolute blast. All right. Miska is up and he needs to make a throw for your fairies, right? Yes, he do. Yes, he do. What's that throw? He needs to make wisdom saving throw. That was a six. So roll that damage for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spiritual. Here we go. 
That's 10. You know what? We broke 20, bitches. We did it. <laughs> you broke through the 20 damage. Yeah, you're doing some good work on him. Yeah, these swirling fairies come by. Slap, 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 slap. So he's going to bring his scimitar down on you. Oh, fuck me. But it was going to be a multi-attack, which is way worse. So, you know, count your chickens and all that. What? That's not, a, I, how that's that's not a thing. It's not a word. Count my bridges before I burn them. Count your bridges before they burn. That's not. Excellent. Just like my mom always says. That's very like serious. Further killing. away from a saying. Yeah, that is a 35. So that's going to hit. Ooh. And he is going to do just 18 damage. Okay. And not bad since I, I don't remember if you guys remember this, but I'm a fucking bomb. So I'm going to Wrath of Storm. As my reaction, this is not my action. Yeah. And that would be when a creature within five feet of you, which he's right there, that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a dex saving throw. DC 14. He's going to have to roll that. Yeah, that's a three. So he does not save. It's a 2d8 lightning or thunder damage. Fantastic. All right. So one second. I'm just going to do 2d8. And actually, Bridget... You don't know why, but your thunder feels a little bit more powerful Ooh. right now. So you're actually going to do 4d4 damage. Oh, thank God, him. because that was three. <laughs> 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 so three plus three plus three. Another three. Fuck. Yeah, three Fuck. plus three. <laughs> Valkyr. <laughs> and you also, you hear like Valkyr's laughter as this lightning blasts him back. How far back does he go? 20 feet? Oh, Hey! Yeah, you push it 10 feet away. No, I don't see that, but I actually can use a channel divinity to actually do maximum damage when I'm doing thunder or lightning damage. So take that back. I'm sorry. He takes eight times four, 32 damage. All right. And actually, if you look at thunderbolt strike underneath that, when you deal lightning damage to a large or smaller creature, you can push it up to 10 feet away from you. It's in your features and traits. Oh, geez. But you can push okay. it up to 10 feet oh, away okay. from you if you'd like. Fuck yeah. You know what? I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll push him toward fucking Claw over there. Yeah. All and right. then after that, it's my turn. And now it's your turn. That is correct. And now it's my turn because that was a reaction. So Miska is looming over Snedrick and Bridget. These fairies come by, slap, slap, slap. He brings his scimitar down in a hard slash across Bridget. And we just see her light up with blue lightning. It crackles all around her, all fear gone. And he is blasted 10 feet backwards towards Claw. And Bridget, you still glow with lightning as you do what? I am gonna go fucking run after him and get him with my fucking ambulance. Ooh, remind everyone of that description. Okay, when the ambulance successfully strikes an enemy, the amount of damage is doubled and converted into HP for a predetermined ally. Who's taking damage? I've taken a bunch. Oh, okay. That's going to be Claw then. A nat 20 makes the ally invulnerable for the duration and a critical failure roll renders the ally unconscious. So, you know, I will stick with Claw. <laughs> <laughs> One use per day. So this is my use. And that is a 23 to nice. That will hit. Roll that damage slash healing. That's 13. 13 damage, which is 26 points of healing. Yeah. 26 points. Oh, 26 points of healing. Fuck, I should have done me. So you pull this ambulance from your back, this red and white candy striped lance that has been sort of mixed in amongst your various packs and you stab it into Miska. And as you do, you see a ghost lance just sort of come flying away and it flutters in the form of a little ghostly butterfly and just <laughs> kisses claw right on the beak. <laughs> nice. Movement, anything. I'm going to like run up to him, but to the side so that, that there's still, everybody else can get a good angle on him. All right. Dave, you are up. You're standing on the stairs. Carl has successfully pulled your pants up back around your, <laughs> your waist. Nice. All right, buddy. Do not put your pants down again. All right. Do you hear me? Yeah, no, I'm you keeping them up. I'm keeping, thank you. You thank are you. embarrassing. No, I know. I know. I might take them back down, but I'll let you know. I'll Don't let you know. Don't you do it. I'm, Don't you do it. I won't do it right now. I'm going to do a thing. I will do a thing. stab you in my heart. Shh, be quiet. Will you be quiet? It's not even your turn. Are you oh, allowed to talk right be, now? Be quiet. I'm allowed to talk if I want to talk. You can talk outside of your I'm not a robot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or a robot yet. I'm not a robot yet, I, but I know about it for some reason. Talking is a free action, like in all the forms of D&D. &D. Here in America. <laughs> Fantasy America, Carl. God. Right. 
<laughs> Consequences aren't a free action, though. All right. It's funny. Now that I edit, I don't say all the illegal stuff I wanted to say when you said Fantasy America because I'm the one who has to cut it. But it's nice for me <laughs> Get to save myself the time. I'm just trying to give you some time to say the stuff that you might want to say. No. <laughs> No, moment of silence for Eli. No, nope, it's, it's a moment of silence for Eli having to it's edit himself. It's about murdering Supreme Court justices. He's in some way. <laughs> oh, I got it. I'll keep it. I got it. Yeah. I'll keep it. <laughs> you guys words that you taught us all before the record. You guys can get in trouble. I would like to cast <laughs> blindness on Mishka. Ooh. I blind him and his wolves. Wait, what? There's... Read On the, how many eyes the, does he have? Yeah, read the spell description. <laughs> I can blind or deafen a foe. I'm going to blind the foe. I can see it within range. They got to make a constitution saving throw. Yep. And the target would be blinded or deafened, blinded in this case, for the duration. He rolled a nat one. Yeah. That went really oh, badly. Yeah. A nat. All those eyes are like extra blind. <laughs> Super blind. <laughs> And I was like, oh, he's actually immune to that condition. No, he fucking is not. So, yeah, there you go. How long is he blind for? The duration. What's the duration? Uh, I'm going to pick uh, until the end of the episode. <laughs> it says it on the spell description. Oh, that's like an official thing? Yeah, oh. it's like an official thing. It, it, it doesn't just go like, how long do you think he should be blind for? I Working don't know. out together. Forever. <laughs> One minute. One minute. Okay, so one round of combat. That would be 10 rounds of combat. Thank you. Is that 10 rounds of combat? Yeah, that's 10 rounds of combat. All right, 10 rounds of combat. He is going to be blind for a while. Can he do a saving throw at the end of his turn to fix it? Yeah. Why would you say yeah? He can. Okay, he can make a constitution saving throw on a success the spell adds. Okay, cool. So he'll be blind for at least this turn. All right, anything else? Uh, I'm going to move in real close to him this time. Ooh. Right, because he's not going to expect that. He's blind. He's going to think you're still back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Surprise him with the next one. That's nice. And I do it super quiet on the sand somehow. Right, right. Dun, dun, dun. Crunch, oh, no, the, the crunch, glass is crunching crunch. the whole time. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. We need to, like, encircle this blind, small wolf and just, like, Bully the shit out of him. Like, I feel like we should because be he's blind and tiny now. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Claw, you are up. Okay. So I'm going to also move in close. Are we just going to like dogpile them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just. Let's not dogpile him too much since I can't, you know, like a gnome punching him isn't going to do too much damage. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, not enough actual play podcasts act with everyone just in a circle kicking the shit out of the middle. <laughs> I think, we, I should think we should do trust falls with him right now. Carl the Pug of Pygacorn is just doing the lookout thing in case the cops show up. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Miska the wolf spider's in your gang at the end of this episode. <laughs> well, no, he's out of our gang. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Five O, five O. We all like run and dive into the bushes <laughs> like kids leaving a keg party. <laughs> so I'm wondering if I should stun him as well as blind him or if I should just try and get in some attacks. I would think just get in some attacks. He's got to have like some, he's got disadvantage on strength too. So if you have anything where there's a strength saving throw. Yeah, he's small and blind. Let's fuck him up now. Well, but he could still attack if he's blind. Um, Badly. He'll get sure. disadvantage. He will. Do you ever get attacked by a blind person? <laughs> it's not very good in my experience. <laughs> well, you're going to find out at Matreon. Tim is going to come after you. I arm wrestled Tim, but that's different because you start, he like he could, he knew okay, where my hand Tim, was. Okay, Tim, you have start. permission to attack Keith at any time during Matreon. <laughs> If I do stunning strike, can I also do a second attack and a flurry of blows, or does it take the whole turn? It says when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to make the target stun. So I'm assuming that's kind of just like one attack. I believe so. Okay, so I'm going to do a stunning strike with the quarter staff. Mm -hmm. That is a 24. That'll hit. He's got to make a constitution saving throw, right? Yes. DC, oh, he's going to save. It's DC 11. Does anything affect his constitution saving throws right now? Yeah, he's blind. I think he's tiny. I think you feel like you would have less constitution if you were blind and tiny all of a sudden. Actually, yeah. okay, here's the question. A blinded creature can't see and automatically fails any ability check that requires sight. Okay. Does this ability check require sight? 
Absolutely. If if he's trying to defend himself, I feel like it requires yeah, yeah. sight, right? So uh, yeah, he yeah. fails. He's stunned. Cool. Well, you know, now I, if he wanted to be a total dick, oh no, no, because I was going to say because he doesn't have his web. If he had his web, then he could still like you know spider feel sense. It, yeah. Right. Also, but, yeah. you remember when Van Dam did the thing where he the blindfold and he just knows the attacks are coming. Right, right. That's he could not. But Miska things. didn't do that. That's fists. the thing. Miska did ah. not train for the Kumite appropriately. Ah. Yeah, and I told him that. I Rookie told him mistake. that before he agreed to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is stunned, Claw. That's your first attack. So does that stunning strike do damage or no? It does do damage, yes. Okay. Let me roll that damage. Ugh, I keep rolling ones on the damage. Five. Uh, five damage. And then I'm going to do my second attack, which is going to be another unarmed strike. Come on. Oh, 26. Yeah, that'll hit. Ooh, can you like snap off like a couple of his spider legs so he's all off balance if he tries to go That's anywhere? That's interesting. I don't think you have the strength for that. Like trip him? He's all small and they're spider legs. It's just like chitinous material that I feel like you could just slap you it off. rip a leg off a deer. It's not, he's not <laughs> that small. You said he's like a small yeah, guy. Yeah, we keep thinking of him as like snow globe, but he's actually like You couldn't like rip five, off five. one of Morgan's legs. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Morgan was a spider, I could rip off a spider leg from Morgan for sure. Again, we will try this at Matreon. We will try this at the pajama party, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you can't rip off Morgan's legs. We mm -hmm. could try. <laughs> well, we will try because we've made the uh, claim. This now. is the snorkel and the javelin all over again. <laughs> and now we have a lot of weird stuff that we have to do. By the way, now I'm not coming to a PJ party. Anyway, sorry. Are there? <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've at least given you a good yeah. reason. Right? Now you can Are there Morgan sized crustaceans? That's what I want to know. Like those Ooh. giant Japanese crabs? And right? You have like to get over the exoskeleton. The inside is just gooch. Am I rolling damage? Uh, yes, please. Jesus. Claw, you are cursed. Okay, does anybody have two items that could be added up together to make like a cracker, like a like a lobster <laughs> cracker at a restaurant? You know what I'm saying? Does anybody mm. have some clarified butter? I've got like talons. Also Could I that. use like two talons to like? Yes, absolutely. Anyways, there five you go. damage. Mm, wonderful. And Morgan, before you poo-poo that damage, I will have you know that Miska the wolf spider bloodied. <gasps> oh, good. Ooh. Good, nice. a tiny trickle of blood that goes down his 5-2 frame. Great. Because he's going like, to grow up again. And like, how soon is he, does the, sight, does the size thing wear off? Round 10. I oh, believe. okay. Yeah, it's one, one minute. Okay. Well, then I am going to do as my bonus action. What if we throw him in the lighthouse? What? What if we send him back to the past or the future? That'd be pretty clever. That'd be a cool way to end it. We might fuck things up if we send him in the past. We would absolutely fuck things up if we sent him in the past. The future doesn't matter. We can just, you know, like, blow up the world. Huh? Hey, welcome to the U.S. environmental <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, the fucking boomer speaks up. Gen X, everybody. As long as South Park doesn't get canceled, right, Eve? <laughs> I'm a millennial. Technically. I say we toss him because it's going to take, Ugh. you know, a certain amount of time and we can go after the queen. He's bloodied already. Just fucking hit him. No, I think I'm going to try and throw him into the lighthouse time. Okay. We are going to be the fucking evil people in our next campaign. <laughs> okay. Give me one second. <laughs> Ability check to throw small creature. Stunned, blinded creature. Okay. So he cannot contest your attack. If you succeed, you throw the creature in the direction you choose. You cannot throw a creature of larger size, but he is small. This is all fucking making sense according to the rules of Dungeons and Dragons, you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Throw a creature a little bit further <laughs> than you can. Oh, that's the weight of material. Consider the weight. <laughs> Start. Okay. Are you doing math in your head right now? <laughs> okay. What is your strength, Claw? 14. Okay. 14. <laughs> If you have, oh my God, this is so fucking hard. This is the reason that D&D &D was created. It was to make math fun. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he is 30 feet away from the steps of the lighthouse of time. Let's say he's 40 feet away from the lighthouse itself. According to the official D&D &D Next rule book, if you have a strength modifier of one or more, you multiply the result by the modifier. Okay. Plus two. So, you okay. 
Throw a heavy object number of feet equal to your maximum lift capacity. Oh my God, they said there wouldn't be math. Jesus, this is <laughs> my fifth grade math teacher who I was like, I'm never going to use this. I'm going to be a comic. She was like, I'm going to get on fucking D&D Beyond. And someday that fat motherfucker is going to be trying to figure out how to throw a wolf spider. And he's going to do the shit that he didn't pay attention to in my class. Okay, so your maximum lift capacity divided by half the object's weight. So now keep in mind, his weight was reduced to one eight. Right. When his size was reduced. So to half. he is. It so he weighs like 10 pounds. Character. Yeah. He might be pretty fucking small right now. What is Claw's maximum throw I'm capacity? I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eli, what's the consensus on the throwing him thing? Well, first of all, I'm figuring out how much he fucking weighs. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. This is important. ChatGPT says the Dragon Magazine says he's 600 to 800 pounds. So now he's 100 pounds. Okay. Okay. At max. He's 100 pounds max. Now, if I go to that other fucking thing. There's no right, way he weighs that you much. You can throw a heavy object a number of feet equal to your maximum lift capacity divided by half of the object's weight. Wait, what is his maximum lift capacity? Because that's the only information we're missing. How to calculate. Maximum lift <laughs> capacity in D and D five E. So it is your strength score multiplied by fifteen, Claw. My modifier by fifteen. Your score fourteen times fifteen, which is uh, I don't know, but it's more than a hundred. Two hundred ten. Okay, divided by half of his weight. Four feet. <laughs> you throw him four feet. <laughs> Nine and a half hours later. Or wait, no, you, it would be eight because you multiply it by his modifier, right? And you're basically throwing him at Dave, who's on the steps of the thing. <laughs> I totally oh. So, Claw, you strike him twice. Well, wait, 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 wait. I just wanted to know what the oh, distance you are <laughs> If you made me do math. not fucking Morgan, doing that. Morgan, no. I'll kill you the man. No, I'll buddy. kill you the human being. I'll poison you. To be fair, what I said was, can I throw him into the time into the lighthouse? I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> we're, we're, we're recording, Morgan. There's no way you're gonna make us believe that's all you said. Like you did say that. Those were words that you because, said in that order, but there was other stuff. Because my thought too. is like if I can teleport him, then throwing's pointless. Okay, you can throw him eight feet. Yeah. What tell me about your teleport? I don't think I can do teleport as a bonus action. I think it has to be an action and I already did my actions. Yeah. So I'm just combing through to make sure. I says I have to be in dim light or darkness to teleport. It's a breach. You're bright Yeah, so it's beach. bright, bright light. Okay. So here's a better question. Can I pick him up and fly him to the lighthouse? Carrying weight. Okay, push, drag, or lift. Weight in pounds, twice their carrying capacity, or 30 times their strength score. So 30 times 14 oh my God. is... What's 30 times 14? It is 420. <laughs> 420, nice. so you can carry him. Nice, but only if you're blazed. <laughs> How far? And we said it's 20 feet past the steps? Oh, no, sorry. Stuff. Carrying is strength score multiplied by 15. So you can carry him. So you can carry 210. So yes, you can carry him your, your speed. Okay. I'm going to pick him up and I'm going to fly him to the door and throw him in the door of the lighthouse. Okay. All right. He is Jesus. going. He can't. He's stunned. He's stunned. <laughs> he can't do anything. <laughs> and also he's blinded. He he's blinded. Him. So like he doesn't know that I'm coming. No, it's not that he's blinded. He, he's literally incapacitated. Yeah, he can't he's do anything. He literally... Yeah. Cannot stop you. It yeah. literally won't let him. <laughs> it literally won't let him. I'm looking right now at all the things. He has a he can't use legendary actions. I was like, okay, I'll just cheat with a legendary action. Nope. Incapacitated. Can't use a legendary. By the by the way, while this is while this is happening, I throw a pocket sand in his eyes, just in case. <laughs> so let me paint the picture here. There's the slashing and the punching. He claws stuns him from behind. And then we just watch Claw with fucking Niska the Wolf Spider 
demon lord of ancient legend in a full Nelson <laughs> towards the lighthouse of time. As he's flying, we just see Dave's hand flash out and throw a little sand in the air. <laughs> he just gets like a <laughs> in his mouth because he's, he's doing that stupid roar he insists on doing. So he gets like a mouthful of sand as he goes and he goes flying into the lighthouse of time. But if you'll remember, as Blade warned you, Demons do not have children and they do not have parents. So he does not have a body to go into. So upon getting into the lighthouse oh of time, God. he is, of course, instantly destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. This is all science, by the way. This isn't made up. Yep. Like we did the science on this. Mm -hmm. This is real math. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. Science, bitches. <laughs> As Miska the wolf spider disappears into the lighthouse of time with one final high-pitched roar, <laughs> the queen of chaos appears in front of you looking, well, put out. <laughs> hmm, says the queen. I did not expect you to shrink him and then blind him and then stun him. And then throw him into the lighthouse of time. Also a its end. <laughs> also a its end. But no matter. And with that, she flicks her hand towards you and you feel yourself squeezed once again by her powerful dark magic that you have no hope of fighting. I have to admit, killing you myself feels a tad unfair, but you know what they say, if you want something done right, you have to do it your... And then she gets hit in the head with a muffin. Sorry, with a what? All of you turn again in what feels like slow motion to see Floon Puff. One <laughs> hand balled in a fist, the other curled around a pastry, a nearly full tin of muffins at his feet. And he says, I, um, I came to welcome you all back and I brought muffins and I thought, but before he can finish what he's saying, his waifish form is blasted backwards by the queen's magic. And she says, well, Floon, I'm afraid all you've done here is sign up to die first and far more painfully than you were ever going to. But Floon manages to say, I didn't just bring muffins. I also brought backup. And as he passes out, his hand opens and reveals a paper bird. One of the ones Blade gave you the very first day you met. A bird that can fly itself to anyone, anywhere on the material plane whose name you know. And you know a lot of names. There is a flash of lightning where the Queen of Chaos was standing and a voice booms out from the sea. Indeed he did, ya devil wench! And bursting out of the sea behind you comes Valkyr astride the back of his love, Umberly, and on the horizon behind them, the entire fleet of sea crash. The queen certainly looks less confident than before, but says, two minor gods in a small army, you think, but then slam! A colossal foot comes soaring out of the clouds, sending <laughs> sand and earth flying, nearly crushing the Queen of Chaos, who barely teleports away in time because the Colossus of Rhodes now towers above you, piloted, you assume, by Diogenes. But he is not alone. Hovering around his knees is the full Aracocra armed guard, led by Claw's sister Nitten, who glows with powerful magic, the sunstone at her neck. Then from the east, Quigley and her sisters and her mother, along with what seems like all of Clough, appear atop a nearby hill to support you. And from the west, a newly established People's Republic of Darkmoor have a battalion of 10-foot-tall Zaphods ready to fight at your side. Mm -hmm. And just when you think it's over, a portal opens in front of you and students from Athiana pour out, led by Holly Crinkles, wielding her mighty varmint hammer. All the people you have helped all the lives you have saved are here to fight with you. Well, fuck. I, I guess we did make friends along the way. <laughs> and while the queen goggles in horror at the supernatural armies that suddenly surround her, Floon snatches the Wand of Seven Winds off the ground, exactly where Blade dropped it, slams the Fiendstone inside and says, 
You may be an unbeatable god, but I dare say you spoke to Floon. <laughs> and with that, the full force of the seven winds blasts out of the tip of the wand, carrying the queen of chaos backwards into the blackness of space like a shooting star, further and further, breaking through the material plane itself and into the void outside of space and time, an infinite howling wind of pure magical power. And with that, the queen of chaos is defeated. There's just an obnoxious wolf spider doing bits there. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Miska, it's us in the void for literally ever. You've got to do literally anything but the... <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I really wish I was dead. I wish I was dead rather than in the void with you. The party that night is legendary. People from all across the material plane and outside of it celebrate, dance, eat, and drink, and tell tales of when the four heroes came to their town. They piece together your adventure, your victories, your defeats, the times you shat your pants, your trials and tribulations, <laughs> but all of them, all of them tell the story of today. This day, when you defeated the Queen of Chaos and saved the plane. It would not be the last time these heroes would save the world, but that's a story for another day. Can I steal the wand of seven parts? <laughs> <laughs> I yes. feel like you've earned it. <laughs> Absolutely. Carl, attack the bird. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys want to play again? Sure. Fuck yeah. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.